Following on from the member for Forest and indeed the member for Canberra, and I want to thank the member for Canberra for bringing this motion to this uh, house so that we can raise awareness about endometriosis. Um, endometriosis is a hidden women's health problem, um, generally because women tend to suffer in silence, and we've heard already accounts of this. It is, after all, and many will be familiar, it's defined as just a period pain, <clears throat> and it's part and parcel of our menstrual cycle, or my favourite one to describe this is it's just a woman's lot and you just need to deal with it. But when period pain is so excruciating, it leaves you debilitated, <clears throat> having to take time off work, resorting to heavy painkillers and spending days in bed for those that need to stay home. We have to recognise that this isn't just the plight of menstruation anymore, Deputy Speaker, and this is something more serious. One in 10 Australian women suffer from endometriosis. It's a health issue that causes significant pain, as we've heard. Um, and if it goes untreated, it can often lead to infertility and to more serious complications, which we've just heard from the member for Forrest about. So all too long, Deputy Speaker, endometriosis has been dismissed by GPs and doctors in Australia, as I said, just as a period pain or a heavy, painful period pain. It is a common condition where tissues similar to the lining of the endometrium, which normally lines the uterus, are found in abnormal sites around the body. And it's a condition that can only be diagnosed by undergoing a laparoscopy or biopsy. And eventually what leads women, Deputy Speaker, to finally being diagnosed or to seeking additional health uh, attention uh, in relation to endometriosis, often that is, they follow a very long and arduous road of misdiagnosis, of pain, anxiety, and more often than not, the silent suffering. Adding to this uh, women's lot syndrome, Deputy Speaker, are the many cultural and religious attitudes towards a women's menstrual cycle. And you, and you can find uh, a situation in this instance which almost ensures that women of culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds find it harder to speak, let alone have the courage to seek medical advice. Now, I have a very large number of culturally and linguistically diverse women in my electorate, so this is a very pertinent issue for them. I'm very concerned for those who are unaware or too embarrassed to seek help from their local GPs. And more importantly, I'm concerned for those women that don't feel their female menstrual health is important enough to seek medical advice. So I'm always grateful for the great work that women in my electorate do to help each other on a raft of issues, endometriosis awareness being one of them. I want to pay tribute to Dr Amber Rind, who established a medical practice in my electorate that focuses primarily on women's health so that refugee and migrant women in particular have a safe space to discuss their issues. Raising awareness, diagnosing and treating endometriosis tackles uh, cultural and religious taboos associated with menstruation head on and ensures that the women in my electorate seek help and understand that left too long or untreated, endometriosis can lead to infertility. And this is a more serious issue for called families in particular who place a significant importance on starting a family. My refugee and migrant constituents are more often than not from a low socioeconomic background. IVF treatment may not be an option they can afford, lending itself to a whole host of other psychological health issues associated with not being able to have children. Dr Ryan and her staff help women talk about these issues and encourage them to seek help. I also uh, want to acknowledge this new generation of younger women from core backgrounds, such as Dr Ryan, and others who are shifting uh, taboos towards women's health. And I want to acknowledge in particular another young woman, Nellis Kifatoglu, the English ed edition editor of the Greek Australian newspaper Nels Cosmos, for her work in using her personal experience with endometriosis to raise awareness. Nelly has been vocal about her experiences with endometriosis in ethnic media and social media in an attempt to debunk any myths around this condition and highlight the importance of treatment and importantly, recognition, specifically in the called communities. In an article published earlier this year, Nelly talks of her journey with endometriosis, her eight years of silence, suffering, numerous misdiagnoses, several GP visits, specialists, surgeons. She talks about the effect this has had on her day-to-day -day life, the pain, the bleeding, the exhaustion, anxiety, tests, hormones, antibiotics, frustration, failed relationships after failed relationships, and her secret fear of losing her sanity. This is a courageous young woman who knows the only way to change perceptions about this silent disease is by going public with them. So raising awareness, Deputy Speaker, is important because there is no other way to encourage women to seek advice and to speak up about this very silent 
condition